Hey, I'm Susie McIntyre Eaton, and welcome to Jesus Listen Stories of Prayer. Today we have an interview with a lady that is just terrific. Uh, you would look at her as I did and say, oh my gosh, she's never had a trouble in the world. And yet, at the birth of her first baby at 26 years old, she found out six hours later that her baby was Down syndrome. You can catch Rebecca all across the country. She does about 30 speaking dates a year. And I guarantee you will fall in love with her. Now, let me stop talking and let's go to our interview with Rebecca Lyons. Well, uh, Rebecca, welcome to the show today. We're so glad that you're on uh, Jesus Listens Stories of Prayer. Uh, prayer is what it's all about, and I know that that has been a huge thing for you in the midst of the of the depression, the anxiety, um, the panic attacks that you've gone and been through in your life. Um, we want to know um, the story behind the story and uh, how how you've gotten through this and how you've gotten beyond it, how you've written a book, how you have um, helped other people recognizing that people go through the very same thing that you do. At 26, I found out six hours after my firstborn that it was failure to thrive third trimester. He didn't grow the last 12 weeks. He was four, nine full term. I had emergency C-section. It didn't take fast enough. So they gave me a second epidural in 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden that high block went up in my, in my, uh, in my, lungs and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't speak. And I just remember thinking I'm dying right now while they're fighting for his life. And I was like, uh, uh, like, I just had to warn someone. The doctor said, if you stop breathing, we can breathe for you. Put me on oxygen, whisked him away. Six hours after that, I remember just laying in the ER uh, one in the morning. The doctor said, we've been looking at Kate and we see signs of Down syndrome in your baby. So it all happened in a 24 hour period at an age, at age 26, I was a baby, just having a baby. <laughs> and I, I just didn't know then at all. And I, in some ways I feel like it was a grace. I had no idea what I was embarking on. My husband and I were like, well, we're all alive. That's mm -hmm. a good sign. You know, we're going to we're gonna count our blessings right now. Amen. Kate is alive. They're going to get it. He's on feeding tube and respirator. He's going to grow. Um, Lord willing, we are going, to, I will, I will be able to stand up eventually when this wears off. And that just began a new journey of um, understanding God in a new way and depending on his strength every day. I grieved obviously like anyone would initially, because it was so scary and overwhelming, but at the same point going, okay, you're going to be with me in this. You've done this. God's been faithful to me through my childhood and my adult life. I, He's not going to stop now. And so it wasn't like I had the answers. I didn't know like where it was going, but I did know that I wasn't alone in it. You've got quite a story about being a young mom with something that hits you right in the face. And, and yet you had to learn to weather through that. Kate's 20 years old and has the hardest year of his life since that year one. It almost took me back as a mother back to year one. And I hadn't had any years like that in between. He was, he's a joy, but he really struggled um, with lockdowns, with a new school, a new home, a new area, a new baby sister that we had adopted, brought home from China with Down syndrome. So he's no longer the one getting most of the attention. You know, it, he was, you know, displaced in several ways and then loses the the regulating rhythm of school and community and connection as being largely nonverbal, he just began to take that out on himself and those who love him. So it was a good reminder that just as God was faithful then in year one, he is going to be faithful again two decades later. The whole point about adversity is sometimes we go through ambiguous loss and some things don't ever have an end date. You know, it's just right. a different way of life. And we can either lean toward that and bow low and bend in the storm so that we can stand back up again, or we can fight against it and beat against it and be so angry and bitter and resentful. And then we're just taken out. What do you say to people? What, what do you say to people that uh, are struggling with this? You just need to make sure they know that you love them and that you're here and you're not going anywhere and you're not leaving, you know, in a month when all the 
like the heightened state like minimizes its win crisis happens and then like the the moment passes the family's still grieving six months later and so often sometimes we start to retreat and we don't know how to fix and so we just avoid and we don't they're not asking for us to fix that mm-hmm. you can't fix that you can't undo that what you can do is make them le- feel less alone in their anguish right and just say i'm here like uh, it's like god like I can't fix this right in this moment, I'm, it, but I'll be here for as many wailing walks as you need. I think it's good to help people understand like loss is real. We are not supposed to just move on. We are supposed to fully grieve because if we cannot grieve, we cannot be comforted. And God comforts us so we can comfort others. Right. So let's just sit in and let him do the healing work that he will in his perfect timing and love, knowing that we're not going anywhere and we're going to be walking that with them. That's right. Sometimes, you know, we get so wanting to do well that we get this little anxiety inside of us and this anxiousness to do well that we mess up. I think I think uh, anxiety comes against us because we're made to carry peace. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's just kind of attacking the very thing we were made for. Mm-hmm. And especially people of faith who just know that Christ is our peace. He's our Prince of Peace. And so... Um, you know, I also think like discouragement, defeat comes against us because we're made to carry hope, right? You know, fear comes against us because we're married to car- carry like courage. And, and so when you know what your identity is and your, your, like your, your calling or your assignment is, it's very life giving, but then you realize, oh, there's like an assault or there's a threat to that. And so when you look at it that way, you're like, okay, this is, This diagnosis or this panic disorder or anxiety or depression is not something to just put on like a, like a coat and like this now is who I am or what I'm, what my life is going to look like. It more is to describe the thing that's come against you that you're weathering, but it in no way defines who you are and it no way dictates the destiny on your life. And so by having that framework that has helped me so much see through something instead of camping there and saying, this is my identity. And just that little tweak of how to see mental health has helped me smile with you today and be one who can be one who brings peace to the place, even though I have been ravaged by panic in in my past and it could happen at any moment, but I'm not threatened by it anymore. I'm not intimidated by it. I think fear is a backyard bully that just gets bigger if you ignore it or avoid it. I just want us to encourage those that are in these spots that are prone to panic, to anxiety, to depression, to delve in, like you said, treat it like it's, it's, it's the backyard bully and you don't have to stay there. You can get help and you can get free of that or get the tools to be able to fight. You're stronger than you think and that God has actually made you for this. It shows you what you're made of. It shows you what's worth fighting for. And when you realize a lot of other people have walked through the same thing that you're walking through, you want to do everything in your power to help spread that message. We all have times of of th- times when we're just not at our best. And to recognize those and to know this is only a moment, this is only a season, we can get beyond this and uh, be healthier and more resilient on the other side. Part of that is even yielding to the pain, getting comfortable with it, not being bullied or intimidated about it, not dwelling in it, but right. going, God, how are you going to use this for for your good, for my good and for your glory? I think when we can come around mental health with a like a basis of faith, then we're only winning. Like God is the master scientist. He made our brains. He uses all means necessary for our healing. And so the more we can understand the skills that are given in clinical spaces paired with the power of God, like it's, it's only going to go well. Like, like at right. least we're, we're, we're getting equipped with what we need. It's just really, really refreshing to hear, you know, that type of, of counseling. Hey, we are, uh, of course, on Jesus Listen Stories of Prayer, and um, we always have our guests to read a day in in the um, the book. And if 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 it doesn't fail me this time, every time it goes exactly with our person that's being interviewed. 
they never mm-hmm. they never miss. What a wonderful writer Sarah Young is, and of course she's got a wonderful subject to talk about his prayer. Sovereign God, help me to make friends with the problems in my life. Many things seem wrong to me, but I need to remember that you are in control of everything. Mm-hmm. Your word assures me that all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good for those who love you and are called according to your purposes. I can access this magnificent promise through trusting you. I've discovered that the best way to make friends with my troubles is to thank you for them. This counterintuitive act opens my mind to the possibility of blessings emerging from my difficulties. Moreover, when I bring to you my prayers with thanksgiving, my anxiety diminishes and your peace that transcends all understanding guards my heart and my mind. In your wonderful name, Jesus, amen. Amen. That's awesome. Father, we know that just what Rebecca read the best way to make friends with my trouble is to thank you for them. That's recognizing that there is trouble, recognizing what it is and and for what it's going to do and how it can hurt and how counterintuitive that act is. Mm -hmm. But Lord, as we change that around and we expose it and we say, I'm not afraid of you, I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to deal with with you. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for our listeners today that if they're in these things, the panic, the depression, the anxiety, the not thinking that we're enough, Father, I ask you to open their eyes and to let them say to you, yes, Father, I'm Mm -hmm. here. Please help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We'll be back again with another story at another time, but please always remember that Jesus cares for you, he hears you, and he's just a prayer away. On behalf of Jesus Listen Stories of Prayer, I'm Susie McIntyre Eaton, and I'll see you next time.